Now, do police officers stick with just the facts, ma'am, or do they sometimes receive divine intervention? You'd be surprised at some of the remarkable stories from the mouths of the cops themselves. Now, stories that can now be found in an amazing collection of real-life accounts from active and retired police officers all across the country. Joining us this morning is author of Spirit of the Badge, Michigan State Police Detective Sergeant Ingrid Dean. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning. Good morning. Now, along with being a detective, you're also a polygraph expert, and I say that because some of these stories do kind of uh, delve into the paranormal, which some people might not believe it, but you were able to determine if these officers were being honest with you. Yes, I've been a polygraph examiner for 20 years with the Michigan State Police. Um, have had opportunities to talk with officers for many years and I had this inspiration that there were many exceptional experiences that have never been shared or are seldom shared with the media and so I decided to do this project. It seems like we just get the facts. This happened at this time at this address but you were able to kind of delve deeper into it Explain, what is this book about? When, when we open this book, what can we find in it? And uh, why, again, did you decide to actually put these stories in writing? There's so much more to police work than people realize. And I think that the public gets hung up on the stereotypical image that we're just these little tin soldiers that want to give tickets and give people a hard time. And that's not true. We're human beings like everyone else with very exceptional moments in the field. And that's what I wanted to share. Now, in this book, we go from angels, dreams, signs, signals, to some of the stories that involve those things. What's one of your favorite stories that you can tell us about? Oh, I love a story called The Lost Badge. And that's a story about a Canadian officer who loses his badge in the forest. He's just about ready to report the problem to his superiors when he gets shipped up to a wooded area about 100 miles north. Apparently, there was some sort of a um, wind shear weather that knocked down all of the trees, and so he was to see what sort of damage had occurred. So when he got up there, he was uh, stepping oh, around the trees that were knocked down and really took a lot of time to get to this eagle's nest that he could see in the distance because he was worried about the eaglets. He wanted to make sure that uh, they were okay. And when he got there, fortunately, there were no birds in the nest. But as he was picking through the little pieces of wood, he found his badge. Wow. So what are the odds? Right, exactly. That we that hear these happen? stories, but it's so rare. You yes. think it'd be gone. And they happen all the time in law enforcement. We're constantly talking to each other about our exceptional moments, but you never hear them on television or in the news. Hmm. Well, I uh, read one of the stories in the book about the officer who had a dream right before 9-11. Mm. And that, can you tell us about that one? A uh, beautiful story. And a lot of officers are reluctant, I suppose, to share their dreams or their intuitive thoughts. And this officer had a dream only three to four hours before the Twin Towers went down. And she said it, um, it woke her up. Um, it was the first time that she ever thought she was really going to die in a dream. And she felt that she was really connected to the officers and the first responders and all those people that lost their lives. But didn't really, she didn't really know what had happened. The dream wasn't about a plane hitting a tower, right? It was just something bad was happening. Correct. Her dream was about a revolution and how she was in a building with this group of people and they were trying to get to the top floor. They were trying to get to the top floor to escape the bombing. That was what the dream was about. So as soon as the Twin Towers went down, she just knew mm -hmm. there was an association, something symbolic about that dream, uh, where she felt that she was connected to that, that occurrence. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you said earlier how a lot of people out there think of police officers as soldiers, no emotions, just hard and tough. How did you get them to t share these stories, some stories that people would say, oh, that's not true, oh, give me a break? I, I think because I'm in police work that officers trusted me more. Um, they knew I wasn't going to embarrass them. Uh, we work awfully hard at our job. We're very reliable, credible people. 
you know, overall, we really just want to be of service to the public. And so when I told them that I was doing my master's degree and that I wanted to uh, contribute this study and show the public a different face, a different side of us, they were very open to it. Wow. And you yeah. had plenty to choose from? How many stories are in your book? I received a total of about 120 stories. Wow. Just by word of mouth, putting bulletins out, um, contacting people on email and through the Internet. And um, out of those 100-plus stories, I got... 60 of them that I really liked and put them in the collection, okay. in the book. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Thank you.